Radios versus touch lamps. Sudden power issues when using FT8. And choking antennas when and where, this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KNMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday, much like these three people that we're about to hear from. Let's dive right in. This first question, uh, this viewer is asking, when I key up on my FT891 on 20 and 40 meters, the capacitive touch lights come on in my house. Oh, boy. When I operate, I set up my radio on the back porch. Coax goes out the door into a uh, a choke balance. Excuse me, I'm choking up as I say that. Then out to the antenna in the backyard. I'm always on battery power, not plugged into the house power in any way. This happens with both the NFED half wave set up as an inverted V uh, and 17 feet vertical staked into the ground. Both antennas are about 15 feet uh, from the back of the house, and these touch lights are another 20 feet away inside. Radio is usually set at 100 watts, and I'm just assuming enough of the signal is coming into the house to cause the issue. Is there any danger here? I'm not worried about a couple lights coming on, but does this indicate a deeper RF problem I need to solve? Can something be applied to the power cords of these lights to stop the issue, or is it just radiated RF getting into the lights? So let's show everybody what you're talking about, because I just so happen to have a touch light in my uh, bedroom on my nightstand. So just like you, I do share this similar experience. Here we are. This is the, uh, we're looking at the light in my bedroom. And as we key up, I've got a little bit of RFI coming on. And now we can see as I unkey, that touch lamp just magically turned on. And this happens on uh, many bands. It doesn't happen on all of them, but uh, it is frequent enough. And I I usually forget about it because I'll be playing FT8 and then I'll go in my room and like, why is this light on? But that's why. So uh, first off, it... Nothing's nothing's getting hurt here. Uh, your radio's not hurt. Your antennas aren't getting hurt. Everything's everything's fine. Um, I have several chokes in line uh, from my coax from to my NFED half wave. I also have another choke right at the radio. Doesn't change anything. I've tried putting ferrites around the power cord for the touch lamp. Nothing I have tried has worked. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I don't care if it turns on and off. I, I think it's kind of funny. And uh, I'm sure Josh at Ham Radio Crash Course is laughing at this because he has struggled uh, with a touch lamp at his house. But his touch lamp was causing RFI to his radios where uh, this is a little bit of payback, I think, for him. So uh, hopefully, Josh, if you're watching, we're, we're getting some payback on your touch lamp issues there. But I, I've choked as much as I can. Um, I don't know what else I can do. Maybe if anybody else has experience with this, they can put this in the comments and uh, we can we can learn together. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know uh, if there's anything else you can do. It's not, it's not, uh, I, I, I break it down to just uh, poor electronics in the touch lamp is, is what I write it off to. So uh, thanks for writing in. I hope, uh, hope we can find a solution for you. Next, we have a question about power issues and WSJTX. This viewer is writing in, uh, he says, sometimes during a WSJTX transmission, the power power sharply reduces to about 10 watts and the SWR meter jumps to uh, infinity and beyond. (laughs) I immediately halt transmission and readjust uh, using the tune option of WSJTX. Adjusting the transmitter setting on the tuner will bring things back to normal. The power on the radio is set to 80 watts. Initially, I set the output power for 20 to 25 watts using the transmit setting on the signal link and then tweaking it with the power slider in WSJTX. Got any ideas what might be causing this? I know sometimes makes it uh, much harder to diagnose. I know the Nelson documentation says no tuner needed, but I found that for SSB and on 20 and 40, the tuner works best to me, so I use it for WSJTX as well. So uh, he's talking about the Nelson antennas 49 to one, I would imagine. He sent a picture of his station here. So he's using WSJTX, he's got a ten, uh, Kenwood TS2000 at 80 watts, MFJ941 tuner, he's got his settings for the tuner, uh, an SW watt meter, and a, a Nelson NFED, uh, he's calling it a dipole, whatever. Uh, installed as a sloper. So yes, I know what the problem is and I also know what the solution is. 
because I have the exact same antenna and it looks just like this. So that's the Nelson Antennas uh, NFED Half Wave. I absolutely love this antenna. Nothing but praises for this. Uh, and the only reason it's in my hand right now is because I took it down to try out another antenna. Either this is going back up or I'm going to get another one that's bigger. Um, the problem lies that, and I've emailed them about this, and I didn't get the answer that I was hoping for, but um, he rates this at 75 watts digital, which I believe is high. I feel Shane needs to uh, downgrade his uh, power settings, his power rating for this maybe 50 watts. I can't run more than about 40 watts through this. It, it's a it's a 240-43 toroid that's in here, so it's pretty small. Kind of the same size that's on like a Pac-10 antenna. After a few minutes of uh, higher power, around 70 watts, uh, what happens is the toroid in here starts heating up. And that's what's causing your SWR to skyrocket. It happens to me too if I'm running too much power. The SWR will just bam through the roof uh, but your radio going down in power is a good thing that's the radio protecting itself because it's seeing a higher SWR so it's folding back the power the solution is don't use that much power uh, like I said I can run about 40 watts consistently I'm talking for hours on end of just calling CQ and making a lot of FT8 contacts so he rates this at 75 watts digital um, but in his email back to me, he was saying that, um, you know, FT8 is darn near 100% duty cycle. I'm like, well, it's a, it's, it's a full power for 15 seconds on, then it's, full, then it's no power for 15 seconds. But I'm thinking, how is that any different than any other digital mode? Now, I haven't really dove into many other digital modes other than Whisper, but uh, I, I can't imagine any of them being short. If anything, FT8 is like the shortest communication because it's only 15 seconds. FT4, obviously, okay, but um, so I I wish he would downgrade the, the, the wattage rating on these just so people don't get in your situation and mine where we're running what we think is the rated power and then all of a sudden the SWR spikes up. So uh, once, the trans, once this transformer cools down, your SWR will go down. I, I really, I, I, would, I would kind of advise against retuning it um, because that's not really solving the problem. The, the, the solution is to run less power. So you're not heating up this toroid as much. And, and I didn't know that when I first reviewed this antenna. I gave it very hard mics. I still do. I love this antenna. Uh, mine is quite resonant on every band. It, the, the wire did stretch over the last year that it's been up. Um, so everything's kind of uh, very, very low in the bands where it's resonant. Not a problem. That, that happens. Wire stretches. Um, so I do need to just fold this back probably a foot or two and it'll it'll sweeten it back up. But absolutely love the Nelson antennas. Got nothing but good things to say about them. Uh, highly recommend them. But uh, that is the problem and that is the solution. Just just run less power um, and, and you should be good. So thanks for writing in and good luck with your ft 80 Lastly, let's talk more about antennas, specifically choking. This viewer is writing, Hi, Mike. I'm putting together my shack at my new house and I have a couple of quick questions. Do I need to choke of any sort with my DX Commander Signature 9? If so, where should it be located? So we'll answer that one first. In my experience with my DX Commander antennas, I do not need a choke at all. Every now and again, I'll put one on if I'm portable just because I have a choke in my bag. Um, and if you are to choke it, I would choke it at the antenna. Just plug the choke right in. I have like these inline chokes from, from ABR Industries. So I use those because you really don't want your, your coax to act as a, as a counterpoise or anything. You've already got all those beautiful ground radials out with the DX Commander. So any choking should be done right at the antenna there. Next question, I'm setting up an NFED random wire nice and low. And I'll have about 25 feet of extra M&P coax to get to that location. I have enough cable to wind in an ugly choke to prevent RFI back into the shack. Um, would that be a choke? I've, I've heard of ugly balance. I've not heard of an ugly choke, but, but let's go with this. Should I put the choke closer to the feed point or closer to the house? I understand that with NFEDs, the shield can act as the counterpoise. 
I plan on extra counterpoise wires to be safe. Thanks for everything you do, blah, blah, blah. So you're kind of going two different ways with this. Now, you said random wire, so I'm going to assume you are using a 9 to 1 unun, not a 49 to 1, meaning you're going to need an antenna tuner for all this. Because you're planning on putting extra counterpoise wires out there, which a 9 to 1, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I've used my Pac-10 a 9 to 1 without a counterpoise. I've used it with a counterpoise. Seem to tune up just fine either way. Um, your mileage, of course, will vary. But if you're already going to have counterpoise wires on that, I would put that choke, again, at the feed point. So I'm eliminating the coax as a counterpoise and, and hopefully any potential RFI that might come back down there. If you weren't using a counterpoise, I would put the choke closer towards or at the radio or halfway between, depending on the length of, uh, so long as your coax is long enough to be an adequate uh, length counterpoise for that uh, end fed halfway, or, or excuse me, random wire, you say. It's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other with this, so you can kind of Choose your own adventure with this. I, I would say if you're going to do the counterpoise, though, just just throw the choke at the feed point and, and be done with it. So that's my thinking on that. So uh, great uh, question. Thanks for writing in, and, and hopefully uh, you get an awesome uh, little... Sounds like you got a little antenna farm going out there. So good luck with that. And that's going to do it, guys. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you again on another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff 73, y'all.